So we were just, you know, working at the piano a little bit uh, with our voices and talking about how this lift and this muscular placement of keeping the energy high just in our faces helps us get the voice to actually cooperate and, and work better, which is applicable to um, the idea of how do we work our voice so that we're strong, or when someone's asking us to have more sound, how do we make more sound without constricting and getting, um, or feeling like we're pushing, all right? So the first thing I wanted to just um, talk about is that we're basically built like a stereo speaker. So ha have you ever seen a stereo speaker, the inside of one? You take the lid off the front. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, you know what it looks like? Yeah, there's like what? what are they? Woofers, and tweeters. woofers and tweeters. There's woofers and tweeters. And if you're high end, you get a mid too. And so you basically have a large sort of concave cone right. is your woofer. Right. Your tweeters, a little tiny concave cone. And then your mids is the middle size one. All right, so in your body, you have all of those. So three areas of the body, where are your woofers? Where, what, where is the largest open area in your body? Open. Uh-huh. Think open space. Lungs. Yeah, your lungs. So basically, when you take air into your lungs, there's a reason that they call the chest voice the chest voice, because you predominantly resonate the chest voice in your chest, in your, in your lungs. But where that open space is allows the vibration to move and make sound. So your chest voice typically resonates predominantly here. All right, your, your middle voice, where's the next open space as you're going up? Yeah. Throat. Yeah. Yeah. Throat. 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 Throat's the next. So the open space in your throat, if we're singing, um, like for example, let's hum this low note. Um, do your little lift, but you're going to feel that vibration here. Yes, in your chest. Okay, great. And let's go up a line. We're going to go up here and... And even go a little higher. Mm -hmm. And you feel the... Mm -hmm. It moves from your chest. It moves. So you Good. still might feel a little bit of a buzz down here, but for the most part, you hear it and feel it in your throat. Okay, now. It's right... It's like the little bones right along your nose. And it's not in your throat anymore. Okay, yeah. so. Your woofers your mids, and your tweeters. Your tweeters are your sinuses and the bones of your face. So when sound is resonating properly, this whole part of the, your, your mechanism essentially is balanced, okay? Now, when, when um, come on in, Barbara. Um, when Barbara and I were talking about this idea of how do you get strength of sound, um, most people's first impulse when someone says, be louder, is to press the voice or try to almost like yell. If you, if you work with kids, which um, I love working with kids, uh, but typically children in large theater productions are not singing, they're yelling. And not, it is not healthy for their voices. So if we articulate, which is what we were working on when we were doing our Nene News, if we're lifted and breathing properly, essentially, the sound as you articulate properly becomes louder as you get stronger with your, your support mechanism and you're actually open and resonating properly. Okay, so when you get on the pure Italian vowels, what happens is they come more far forward. So the, the, there's a brighter quality to them. And in some musical situations, that's not desirable. Sometimes in choral music, if you're doing um, you know, sacred music in a group, the choral director will actually want a rounder, darker sound. But your singers may not be all that comfortable. It's sort of a trade-off. Mm -hmm. You get the sound mm -hmm. you want, but your singers may not be having an easy time of it. Mm -hmm. So it, for me, in the bel canto, there is something called, remember when Lindy first met me, we, were, we had just read this article in the Nats Journal called mm -hmm. Chiaro Scuro, mm -hmm. which Thanks. means light dark. Mm -hmm. it, it, ref, it refers to the light dark artwork, mm -hmm. which you do with shading. But if you think about this principle that in bel canto you're working with bright vowels that are more forward and lifted, okay, energized. But the musculature itself is in good resonating position, which is more what creates the roundness. So mm -hmm. instead of us creating the roundness by dropping our jaw and manufacturing a sound that's not real, okay, it's covered, Okay, we're basically creating an instrument that is resonating properly, which gives you a balanced sound with the ability to control it with more ease. 
And as Susan, as you were discovering in that last exercise, you essentially can go from your lowest note all the way up through that top passaggio and it feels exactly the same. It doesn't feel like you're working any harder.